Mr. Barno on the wing now. And he's just flown by the post. I'm hoping, hoping and praying we get to get to see him in a minute. Well, good evening, everyone. It's uh, good to see you all again. Um, back out with the camera, Saturday evening. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's got a little bit cooler now, so I've changed my hats. So I've now got a warmer hat on. And what I'd like to do today is, well, I want to continue the review of the, the V6 Tragopan Hide that I started in my, pre my last video. But I also wanted to bring you along for some owl photography this evening. Um, I'm at my barn owl site, as you can see behind me, there's a barn just there, and the whole paddock is quite extensive. Um, as most of you probably know, I'm probably best known for my owl photography. Uh, and a lot of those photos are captured after dark, um, without flash, without the use of flash. So I wanted to show you how I do that, how I use continuous lighting, what my camera settings are, and really give this uh, new hide a test in a, in a real life situation. So I've got a lot of kit to carry across the field, so I won't be able to do any fancy B-roll as I walk into the spot. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you out there and I'll see you when I'm setting the hide up. Okay, so I'm at the site now. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see this here, let me just show you. Not exactly uh, traveling light. Um, obviously with the with photography after dark, you have to carry the lights. I've got the hide there, of course. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's quite a quite a bit of kit to carry through the through the actual paddock. But um, yeah, here's the paddock itself. It's quite big, as I said. And in this corner, I don't know if you can see, in this corner just here, is a big big tree. And uh, the barn owls have nested this year, and the fact that they've nested twice, so they're now on a second brood. And the young owlets are coming out and branching, and so that means sitting out on the trees, uh, begging for food. So. The adults are flying around this paddock quite readily. Um, and uh, yeah, so as I said before, uh, time is a bit against me at the moment. It gets dark quite early. Um, so I think the sun sets around about six o'clock. So I've got to get the hide set up fairly quickly. But uh, I don't know if you can see. So here's the, uh, that's it, is it? Yeah, that's the, the post we're going to be setting up on just there. So I'm, where I'm standing now is where I'm going to put the hide. Um, and I'm going to light the post up, as I said, without flash. I don't use uh, flash photography for nocturnal subjects. I used to many years ago, but uh, made a conscious decision not to do that anymore. Um, and I've probably been doing uh, continuous light photography on, on owls for the last two or three years now. And yes, you can get some wonderful images uh, doing it this way. And I, for my, in my view, it's uh, uh, you know, a totally ethical way of doing it so the bird is not disturbed in any way it's its own personal choice whether it lands on the post or not So, and it doesn't even know it's having its photograph taken so that's the plan for tonight this is the post just there and uh, let's, get the, let's get the hide set up you can uh, see from the, the tracks here uh, this uh, it's a quite well used paddock so I don't know if you remember a previous video where I showed you the badger set well that's right near that post where we're gonna try and photograph the owls tonight and badgers are creatures of habit so they use the same paths every day and you can see there's a this, this whole paddock is strewn with different different footpaths going across where the badgers leave their marks so yeah so for a small acreage it's packed full of wildlife which is wonderful So uh, here's the hide on location. As you can see, I don't know if you saw in my last video, I put the rain cover on. And that was really for lengthy stays. I'm only staying for a few hours this evening, so I've not bothered with that. Um, and as you can see, uh, hide set up, pointing over towards the post over there, so you can see. I'll zoom in on that. So that's where we're hoping to see the owls on that post, and the badger sets in that corner. Um, just want to point out a few things. I mean, thanks for everyone who who commented on my last video of this new hide. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of it. I, some people said that they weren't too keen on the camouflage. I actually think it works in quite a few situations. Um, so I, it's grown on me, if I'm honest. Uh, the camouflage I quite like. Um, a few corrections I wanted to make, really, because I 
kind of misinterpreted. So these, these portholes here, these aren't actually for lenses, I and mean, you can obviously put a small lens through here, but these are really for observation ports, so, um, which I think is quite a neat idea, and you can also close them up with these pull strings if you wanted to block, block it out completely. Um, certainly big enough to put a pair of binoculars through and keep an eye on what's around. Um, I'm, I'm obviously using the, the, uh, the bigger lens tonight, the 600, so I've changed. So they have these change parts which you can add in to accommodate uh, bigger equipment. This is obviously a camouflage one where they have one that's got the same patterning as this. Um, so these just basically clip in on the inside and accommodate your lens and you've got a pull, pull cord here to tighten it around the, uh, the lens hood. So I think that's a really nice feature. Um, tonight I'm not going down low so I'm not going to shoot uh, out the bottom here. I'm just going to shoot on a level with the post, hopefully, assuming an hour appears. Um, yeah, so yeah, all in all, I think it looks quite good in sitting in location. Um, yeah, a very good and unique hide. So a few other things I wanted to point out uh, while there's still enough light to do so. Um, so as you can see, this hide, unlike most hides I've seen, this is silver on the inside. And I believe this is an isotherm layer, so it, it keeps you cooler in the summer and keeps you uh, warmer in the winter. So it's, it's very effective um, and I've heard reports that it can make a five degree difference uh, in either situation. So I think this is, a, this is a, quite a big plus point and I know the company are very keen on this, this new design. Also it acts as a light proof so um, a lot of hides they have uh, pinholes or you can actually see through the material. This is a complete light barrier so um, no light will leak out assuming you've got all these these pockets um, zipped up and everything no light should leak out and disturb the wildlife so that's another plus for this uh, this silver lining um, as you can see here uh, we have the the um, the new section put in for the bigger lens and they basically clip with these little clip in place with these little clips here and they just basically pop open like that and you can clip them in place so you can change these over you could, I've got, if you've got two or three you can change um, each side to accommodate different lenses um, yeah, so all in all, I'm very impressed. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it performs tonight in a, in a real situation. Okay, light's fading fast, so we better get a move on. So I'm gonna show you the lights I use, so, and the kit I brought with me tonight. Just undo my trusty Gitzo bag. Okay, so we've got the, uh, I've got, obviously got my big 600 uh, on the 1DX Mark II. Um, and these are my lights that I use primarily. So these are, by a company called Rotolite. They're the Rotolite Neo, so these are the first versions. They did bring out a second version which has a built-in flash. Um, yeah, so these, well, this one's got a, a softening filter in. Well, you don't need that, I've just left it in, but this is the other one. So I used three lights in total. I used two Rotolite Neos and a cheap, uh, a cheap um, LED light, which I used just to light the, uh, light the ground, really. So these are the three lights that I use for my alpha photography. This is, this, these are the number of lights I use if I want to do um, static owls on a post. And if I wanted to do action shots, so for example, if I wanted to catch uh, an image of an owl coming to land on the post and get that moment of touchdown, which you've probably seen in some of my images, I basically double the number of lights, so I put six out. This is really just to put more light on the scene, which gives you a faster shutter speed, etc., etc. So. Tonight, I'm just going to hopefully get static shots, so it's a three light setup. Something else you obviously need are uh, a light stands. So I've got some very cheap ones here, you don't need to spend a lot of money on light stands. At the end of the day, they end up being covered in mud and, and dropped and everything. So these are some cheap ones that I picked up uh, second hand. Um, and I say I have at least five of these. Today I've only brought two because the third light I'm going to put on, just lean on the floor. Okay, so there's the, uh, the light setup. Um, you've got, uh, as you see, two lights at 45 degree angle and there's one, I don't know if you can see it, just on the floor down there. Just down there. Just, uh, just lighting up the post itself. And the top, these two on the sides are really for the, uh, for the subject. I did like the one on the right to be a little bit further around, close to the post, but there's a big ditch just here, I say I've never photographed this uh, part of the paddock before, or certainly not on this post. Um, so ideally I'd like that a little bit closer, but um, certainly not uh, gonna spoil this e the evening. 
Um, I should say these uh, these rotor light um, lights. They're very very expensive. I mean they're at least they're well over 200 pound. The reason they're that expensive is they're color accurate, so you can alter the uh, color temperature of the light itself. Um, really, they're for studio photography, but they work perfectly out here because they have a long life. They're very powerful, and so you can alter the, um, the temperature of the light itself. But you don't need anything so as extravagant as expensive as that. Any any LED system will be fine um, as long as it's battery powered. And uh, yeah, they, I think you can get them for less than 100 pound. Same the one I've showed you. So this one just down here on the floor. I think this one was about 60 pound off Amazon. So yeah, they're very affordable. You don't have to have these very expensive ones. It was just that I had them around. I was doing some studio work and uh, yeah, I use them now for outdoors. So so let's get the let's get the camera set up. Get it in the hide. Um, get settled down. Have a cup of coffee and um, go from there. So we're now at um, probably the best time now. The owl should appear from should appear soon. Um, it should fly out this tree, start quartering this paddock soon. So I'm gonna give it five minutes. I think I'll probably switch the lights on soon. I'm just gonna finish my coffee and uh, get in the hide and uh, hopefully. We see something but um so i'll keep looking around as we're hopefully going to see something but uh, yeah i don't want to be out here too much longer just in case it does come on the wing soon so these are my settings as they at the moment um so i've got my kelvin so my white balance set to kelvin and this is set to 5400 I've set that deliberately because that's the temperature of the lights that I'm shooting with today. I mean, if you were shooting with lights that you couldn't control the temperature, you could use uh, auto uh, auto white balance. Um, I'm also shooting wide open at f4. But obviously, we want to let as much light in as possible. So this on this lens, as wide as point is f4. Um, ISO at the moment is two and a half thousand. Um, I'll probably up this to about four thousand when it gets really light, really dark. Sorry. And um, shutter speed, I want to stay about at least one one sixtieth of a second, if not a bit more. Um, these, I say, are static birds. They don't move so quickly, hours, so, which is fortunate. Um, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to do flight shots, then I would have to yeah, more lighting. I've got my shutter to silent, as silent as the one yet can be. So I want to minimise disturbance. I won't get as many frames per second at that. I think it's something like 10 at this setting. Whereas if it was in high speed, it would be 14, I believe. And I've got it set to one shot. So I will continually keep acquiring focus, um, which I find better in this situation. AI servo tends to hunt a bit more. So one shot seems to be a little bit more accurate. And I have single point autofocus set up. So that's how I create my images at night. And um, yeah, the only advice I can give you is to take as many photos as you can. So obviously at a lower shutter speed, you will get some motion blur because the bird will move. So take as many as you can and you'll get a few which are absolutely pin sharp. So I know you can't uh, see me at the moment, but uh, and I'm whispering, but there's a barn owl on the wing now. And he's just flown by the post. I'm hoping, hoping and praying we get to get to see him in a minute. So there's the post all lit up. There's a barn owl just flying in there. Anyways, that's what it looks like through the uh, live view on the camera. Just darken that down a bit. So there we go, that's what the camera sees and hopefully we'll get a barn owl or a tawny owl on top of it soon. Nothing's guaranteed though. I don't have focus, but I've got the red light on at the moment. Um, there's definitely an owl out there. I've seen him fly by a couple of times, but um, yeah, nothing yet. <coughs> so I don't know if you can uh, hear the racket in the background. Is that uh, motorsport still going on? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a day. I've not seen anything from the, uh, from the hours this evening, which is, which is oh, fine, it's the way it goes.
As you can see, it's uh, very dark out there. So, yeah, here's the post, unfortunately. Nothing tonight. Um, as you can see, I don't know if I can show you the setup. Uh, but uh, so you've got one light there, just there, and you've got another one just here, and then there's the one on the floor just down there. So, three light setup, as I said before, uh, for owls that are sitting on a post. Nothing dynamic, no, f no flight shots. If you do that, you need to double the amount of lights to six lights, which, yes, can get expensive. Um, but yeah, the hide, uh, sorry, the, uh, the post generally looks like this. If I just turn you around now. So that, it's, uh, that is the setup. The three lights illuminating that post. That's me virtually packed up. Um, just got the one light left on now lighting me. I'm gonna turn that out now and it's gonna go very dark. So thanks for watching tonight. Um, apologies if we didn't see an owl tonight, but we're back in the week, as I said before. Please subscribe. I'll uh, leave some images at the end of the video just to show what you can do and uh, when the owls have shown. And uh, yeah, see you on the next one.